Do you know when Europe Day is? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know. Uh, no, sorry, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. Ooh, no. No, sorry. Pardon? Yes. On the 9th of May. This man is from Poland. I am not surprised he knows when Europe Day is. Europe Day is on the 9th of May. Here in Brussels, people hardly know, but in Bosnia-Herzegovina, it's a big party. Vyosa Musliu is professor in the political science department at the Free University of Brussels. She's been studying the Balkan countries for years now. Because when you visit Kosovo, you might have the impression that the people over there are much more European than Europeans. So how come they are not an EU member state yet? The Western Balkans is composed of a handful of countries that are geographically part of Europe, but they are not members of the European Union. Albania, North Macedonia, Montenegro, Kosovo, Serbia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. Many people who follow EU developments might find this to be a strange component. In 2003, the European Union issued an invitation at the Thessaloniki summit to these countries to become members of the European Union. But now, 20 years later, they are not yet members. And the problem is not that the Western Balkans don't like Europe. On the contrary, as a political scientist, Vyosa has been doing fieldwork in the Western Balkans for more than a decade. She's talked to all kinds of people, rich and poor, in cities and on the countryside, politicians, farmers, teachers, and one thing's very clear, almost everyone in the Western Balkans wants to join the EU. The European Union is still associated with this Pleasantville, where everything works, and they associate the European Union with gender equality, with LGBT uh, plus uh, high records of rights, with uh, rule of law, with high standards of equality, and so on and so forth. So what's the problem then? There are a lot of reasons why they are still not members of the European Union. And most of these reasons have to do with uh, what the EU considers to be poor records of rule of law, of uh, democratic standards, and also protection of human rights. These are officially the reasons why they are not part of the European Union. Uh, unofficially, there are a lot of political, geopolitical, but also cultural reasons why the region is not yet seen ready to be part of the European Union. Processes of reconciliation have not been entirely uh, successful, uh, not completed uh, as well. And this has uh, left a lot of open wounds and a lot of developmental problems that make countries of the region not seem ready to join the European Union. Before becoming members of the European Union, territorial disputes between countries have to be solved first. Oh, so because there's no real reconciliation after the wars in ex-Yugoslavia in the 90s, the region is not considered to be stable. But that's not all there is to it. Other reasons that are associated with the region lagging behind also have to do with the perception that the EU has about these, uh, these countries. And we should not forget that the majority of this, uh, of this region is still composed by populations that are either Orthodox or Muslim. Now, the EU and the way how it was uh, formed, the EU is a primarily white Christian structure and uh, it traces a lot of societal and cultural values in that metaphysic. Countries of the Western Balkans belong to different civilizational lines. Okay, but the EU knew that the Western Balkans were a bit different from traditionally Christian or white Europe in 2003 as well. Why then did they ask these countries to join in the first place? I think 2003 was a very different period for the European Union. It was also a very different period for the countries of the region as well. 
there was still um, a sense of global um, uh, optimism, or at the very least, European optimism. And the idea to create a larger European security zone, especially after the 9-11 attacks in 2001 in the United States, was uh, very much prevalent. That type of enthusiasm uh, has clearly veined throughout the time, but it has also veined because of successive uh, rounds of enlargement with countries such as Slovenia, then countries of Central and Eastern Europe, then Bulgaria and Romania. Many of these rounds of enlargement were not particularly rosy in the sense that many uh, far-right or nationalist strands across Western and Northern Europe made the issue of others, of Eastern Europeans or, or of Southern Europeans, as a security problem inside uh, their own countries. This, uh, in a way, led to uh, the public opinion in some of these countries to not be particularly sympathetic to yet another enlargement for the countries of the Western Balkans. And you can see that a certain sentiment uh, that is not necessarily unhealthy, but a certain sentiment of skepticism, or at the very least, de-fetishization of the EU is starting to take shape and form in these societies and in these countries. And you particularly notice that when you travel across the region, you notice that amongst the young population. From what I have been hearing from Vyosa, I'm wondering whether the Western Balkans will ever become EU members. And Vyosa even has some doubts on whether they should. What will the EU look like by the time that countries of the region will be able to join it? It will be like going very late to a party. The beer is already warm and the pizza is stale. Do you really want to go to that party after all? Thank you.